Su-57 fighters which have entered service from late 2020 have been fielded with AL-41 F-1 engines, a derivative of the AL-41F-1S that currently powers the Su-35 feet 4 plus plus generation fighter. The AL-41F-1 is a derivative of the Soviet AL-31F that was brought into service in 1984 to power the country's Su-27 air superiority fighters, and has been heavily enhanced through incorporation of a range of technologies developed for the primary engine of the cancelled MiG-1.4 2 5th generation fighter. Its performance and efficiency are nevertheless below that of even the oldest 5th generation fighter engine, the American F-119, powering the F-22, much less the more modern F-135, powering the F-35, or WS-15, powering China's J-20. The Su-57M1 will integrate the much-delayed AL-51F1, which is the first clean-sheet fighter engine introduced into Russian service in over 40 years. The engine will significantly improve all aspects of the fighter's flight performance, enhance its stealth, and reduce operational costs and maintenance needs, while increasing power available for onboard subsystems such as radars. Integrating the new engines, the Su-57M1 is expected to have higher levels of thrust than any other fighter with the possible exception of the J-20. The Su-57M1 is expected to be visually highly distinct from the baseline variant due to the significant revisions that were made at its airframe, which is confirmed to have been widened to provide greater aerodynamic lift and improve stability at supersonic speeds. With a number of unconfirmed reports indicate that the AL-51F will allow the Su-57M1 to cruise at speeds exceeding Mach 2 without using its afterburner, it has been confirmed that the changes to the fighter's airframe are intended to better facilitate sustained supersonic flight without the use of afterburners. The changes are expected to better capitalize on the much improved flight performance potential that will be facilitated by the AL-51F in other ways. The Su-57M1's fuselage and internal weapon bays will also be flatter than that of the original fighter, which is intended to further improve the aircraft's stealth capabilities. The Su-57 was the first Russian fighter class to integrate an active electronically scanned array AESA, radar in its nose cone, and remains the only one to do so today. While little is known regarding the fighter's NO36 radar, the Su-57M1 will integrate a more advanced primary sensor. The very significant delays in the Su-57's development and service entry may have allowed radar technologies to sufficiently advance that the production run of the NO36 would need to be cut short to integrate a successor onto Russia's most capable fighter class. The radar's development may also have been influenced by experience operating the Su-57 in the Ukrainian theater, where ground mapping and electronic warfare are though to have been critical to its primary roles of launching precision strikes and engaging enemy air defenses. The transition to a new radar mirrors the rival F-35's own transition from the ANAPG-81 to the much more sophisticated ANAPG-85 radar, which has also required a redesign of the fuselage due to the new radar's larger size. Alongside a new radar, the Su-57 also integrates AI-assisted onboard systems intended to facilitate much faster system initialization with a single button press, which has streamlined pre-flight checks and mission readiness. It remains uncertain what other improvements may have been made to the aircraft's avionics suite. In December 2024, Russian state media has unveiled a new helmet-mounted targeting system for developed specifically for the Su-57, which appears to have highly similar capabilities to the systems that have long been used on the Chinese J-20 and American F-35 fighters. 
The helmet projects critical information directly onto the visor, including flight and targeting data, and reportedly provides a comprehensive view of the operational environment when pairing with the fighter's sensors. The helmet is expected to narrow a key performance gap with the J-20 and F-35. A major shortcoming to the effectiveness of the helmet system, however, remains Su-57's lack of a, a distributed aperture system, a subsystem unique to the F-35 and China's J-20 and FC-31, which allows pilots to see through their aircraft using their helmets paired with using optical sensors, while also providing warnings of incoming threats. The Su-57 partly compensates for this, however, with its unique suite of five AESA radars dispersed across its airframe. Although the new helmet-mounted targeting system has not been specifically stated to have been developed for the Su-57M1 variant, its operationalization is likely to coincide with the new aircraft's entry into service. During combat operations in the Ukrainian theater, the Su-57 has been confirmed to have utilized Russia's longest range of air-to-air -air missile, the R-37M, to engage targets, with the missile combining an unrivaled Mach 6 speed, 400 km engagement range, and very large 60 kg warhead, and proving to be highly potent in combat. The missile was developed for the much larger, faster and higher flying MiG-31 interceptor, however, with its weight not only taking a significant toll on the Su-57's flight performance, but also compromising its radar cross-section due to its inability to be stored in the aircraft's internal weapons bays. The Isdelier 810 was thus developed as a miniaturized derivative of the R-37M, which can reportedly be carried in the Su-57's internal weapons bays. Its service entry is expected to closely coincide with that of the Su-57M1, providing the longest air-to-air -air engagement range of any fighter of its generation. The missile is capable of engaging fighter-sized targets but is also optimized to neutralize support aircraft such as tankers and airborne early warning jets, as well as heavy bombers, at long ranges, although a significant possibly remains that the missile will carry a small radar and have a slightly shorter range than its much heavier predecessor. The ability to launch very long-range air-to-air attacks from a low observable fighter has the potential to represent a particularly potent combination and allows the Su-57 to operate very differently to other fighters of its generation, including for hit-and-run attacks on high-value enemy support aircraft.